Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the alien role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is called Chariots of the Gods. It was written by Andrew E. C. Gaskia, and it's available from Free League Publishing. Our game mother is Tyler Hudak, and this is episode four. Our recap will be given by David Gassaway as company man, Ernest Harker. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. David. Thank you, Tom. Uh, diary entry that I will never have a chance to write. <clears throat> we are on the ship Kronos. Our ship, the Montero, was sabotaged. It was sufficiently disabled that despite the captain's brave efforts to move it far from us, uh, it exploded with such vehemence that several uh, punctures were made in this ship. We've been running around and sealing the, those up. Uh, the Kronos, a 70-year-old vessel, um, is significantly damaged. Uh, the survivors of the Kronos were uh, second-in-command Johns, who took over as captain, a Marine named Reed, a scientist, two scientists, Cooper and Powell, um, the company man who preceded me, one Clayton, and their synth, Ava. Well, whether Ava is a survivor remains to be seen. I have located her at last, but what remains of her? She was passing some of the 70 years time during which the crew was in hibernation, folding animals out of metal. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon animals, but she's been substantially damaged. Her synthetic fluid is all over the mess hall where I am with Officer Reed, who, based on what we know about the alien agent that has infected the Kronos, she seems to be uh, going through the changes. It, whatever this substance is, they brought back from planet LZ-17 makes people aggressive, and I'm alone with her, and she has a shotgun. Um, I might not be in the worst position, though, although I do not currently know it. Powell and Coleman, who were cleaning the air scrubbers, uh, have been found by some misshapen xenoformic life form that doesn't have eyes, but does have too many teeth in its mouth. Uh, the captain stuck with a couple of the angry survivors of the Montero and our pilot, Joe, has gone missing. I might not have to worry about these things though, because in the short term, again, I'm alone with a wildly enraged Marine with a shotgun. Fingers crossed everybody. All right. So when uh, we last left, we were in the middle of two different, uh, you know, uh, actions going on. So what I would like to ask is uh, Flynn and Herb, please make initiative rolls. Remember, we're doing a D20 and just tell me what it is, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Company Man, if you it will. Uh, yeah, if you can um, do that as well. That's a six for me. Seventeen. Right. 14. Give me one second. So Herb got six. And Flynn got 14, right? And I'm sorry, what was the other one? 17. All right. Well, this is what we'll do. We'll start with um, <clears throat> over back in, uh, we'll wait for him to, to get back. But while uh, we're waiting, uh, we'll start uh, with Ernest back in the... Uh, uh, the mess hall, uh, Ernest, well, you had, uh, just, uh, just kind of to refresh everybody's memory, you had leaned over, uh, uh, the synth that you found in there. Uh, the mess hall again was a huge uh, mess. It, it lives up to its name. There was rotting food everywhere. Uh, there were tables and chairs kind of flipped over. You did find a bunch of, uh, 
origami figures made out of metal, uh, supposedly, you know, from, from somebody, uh, and lying on the ground was a, a young woman, or at least the body of a young woman. And when you went up to her, uh, you know, you found <clears throat> that uh, she, uh, her head had been uh, damaged, uh, and there was like a white milky liquid coming out, which is an indicative of the synth. And that is when Reed, the Marine who was accompanying you, the colonial Marine from the Cronus who was accompanying you, started to get angry. Uh, she, uh, you uh, had kind of heard her being a little agitated as you, as you know, throughout this whole process. But once you got in here, she, she looks at you, lets out this kind of like, you know, angry roar and then uh, yells, you're not supposed to be in here. And as you turn around and look at her, her face is just a, a complete red, uh, more, more so than it, it really should be. Uh, additionally, you can kind of see how her face and maybe her arms seem to be a little bit more stretched than they, than they should. Her arms uh, seem to be almost pulling out of her uh, suit uh, and her, her face seems to be like very, very, very swollen. Uh, but with that, uh, so remind me, uh, we we're doing highest goes first, right? That's what we did before the highest number. Perfect. All right. So Ernest, that means you get to go first. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm, I'm quite unhappy about the prospect, but I think I have no choice, but to shoot this woman in the face. Okay. <clears throat> Um, is that close combat because we're right on top of each other? No, it's still or ranged. It's, it's still, still ranged. ranged. All right. Um, so, but you probably get a. So, so remember, uh, it's been a while since we've uh, had combat. So remember that um, in combat, you get uh, uh, a short action and a uh, a slow action and a fast action. Uh, because you are so close, uh, you're considered engaged range. So you, I'll, I'm going to give you a plus three. Uh, so you get to roll an extra three uh, regular dice. Okay. So yeah, you'd roll your ranged combat uh, plus uh, because so agility that's, that's with it plus your panic dice. Four mobility, one ranged combat, three <clears throat> bonus, and three panic. That's a lot of dice. She was the only person I trusted. One six, no ones okay, on that, the that, panic. Uh, one six is all you need. Uh, so you, uh, what were you shooting her with again? Uh, I've it's got a pistol. Yeah, there's a, yeah. And uh, do you know how much damage it does? I have no idea. Give me one second and let me. Look I did to believe. start with it. I believe it's just. It's one. probably the same as what the captain had. So you might know, Tom. Yeah, it's just one. Uh, just as one damage. Uh, so yeah, you uh, line up uh, and shoot and absolutely hit her uh, right in the middle of the chest. Uh, I believe she was wearing a, a suit. She was one of the people who got dressed up I in one everybody of the suits. put on EVAs. Yeah. And, yep. And you can see the, the blood just starts to drip out from her. I don't believe that I had you take a stress for this uh, either. So if I hadn't uh, go ahead and take one stress, um, shall I, shall I roll one six? No, that's okay. 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 So <laughs> now, will add it. so now it is her turn. Uh, she just gets even angrier uh, that that you shot her. Actually, I'm sorry. That was your uh, slow action. You do get a fa uh, fast action, right? Um, and the whole mess hall is in complete disarray. I think right. I would sort of like to throw myself behind a table because her rage is going to okay take longer than her wound I think. so just just to let you know too with uh with the alien role-playing game and this is for everybody too uh if you get into uh what's considered close combat which is melee combat uh if you have a fast action left you can actually use it to try to block the uh the attack uh it's a uh, strength uh role um and so if you want to save your fast action for that you are allowed to do that if you would prefer i am I think uh, Marine Reed is about twice my size and musculature. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to like having shot get in the way of her shotgun seems very hopeless to me. She, okay. you know, she'll just knock me across the room. Okay. So uh, you, the, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll say that, you know, with what's going on, you can kind of jump up, jump around, uh, you know, you want to put something in between her uh, and yourself. Uh, so there's like a, a, t- a flipped over table mm-hmm. uh, that's within, you know, like scrambling distance so that you can get over there and get this table. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm picturing. You. Yeah. So so with that, what she does is uh, she starts to uh, run towards you um, to create, uh, you know, to move into engaged range. And then she goes to she doesn't actually like aim with the the shotgun instead what she's doing is she's actually like using it as a club mm-hmm. it, it yeah so um she's here um so she does get one success for that however you are wearing a spacesuit uh right. and so your spacesuits have two armor two so armor. go ahead and roll two dice and it, every six that you have you get reduces the damage by one uh, one Actually, you know, what? go ahead, and I'm going to let you roll um, another uh, two dice with that as well, because you have that cover. She has to kind of get around that cover, so that that could be kind of like an armor too. Yeah, still no, no sixes. No All right, so she swings the shotgun down at you, uh, uh, and is uh, you are not able to block it. You take one point of damage. And not only does that happen, she she hits you uh, right, because you're kind of cowering down behind the table. She hits you right in the helmet. And uh, you can see the 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 glass of your helmet or the, the safety glass yeah, just start to crack. It like spiders out. Uh, Captain Paul and Joe, you are only like down the hall. You, you oh, I'm sorry, actually, Captain Paul, you were in the bridge. Um, you uh you you hear this uh, gunshot ring out uh and as as you hear that J- uh jones and uh clayton uh who are or johns and clayton who are with you they also hear that joe are you still on the same deck oh only like two or three minutes have passed yes okay yes. So, so you I, would have heard I, I messaged that. you telling you where oh, okay okay sorry i missed up so, uh, Captain Paul, you you hear this? Uh, the other two in uh, the the room with you uh, also hear it. What the hell? <clears throat> Does anybody have a weapon? You should have a pistol. Oh no, no, no you lost. No, your I pistol. lost. That's my right. Pistol. You lost your pistol. The other two do not have weapons. All I'm, right. Well, I, I'm gonna... I, I heard it because I'm still on this deck, right, Tyler? If, if I'm on the deck, I heard it. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, um, you, from where where you are at, you uh, you definitely hear it. It's it, you can kind of tell the direction that it's coming from as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna run that way then. I'm I'm gonna jump up and I'm gonna run out and go in that direction. All right. So you, so you all start <laughs> running <clears throat> towards the mess hall. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ernest um, Reed is standing there right above you. Uh, she gets to go again. Uh, so she swings again. Uh, and won't tell you how many successes she got, but go ahead and roll the same amount uh, for uh, armor. So, so two for your suit, and I think uh, I give you I gave you two more for the table. Two. All right. Two so that is a five and a three. That knocks her down uh, two successes. Uh, so you only take two damage. Oh uh, hell! And as the shotgun again comes right down on you, uh, that was her fast action uh, for her, or that's her slow action. For her fast action, she's just going to kind of stand there and uh, not really, uh, there's no, nothing. She's just kind of, you know, standing over you, kind of venting. Uh, you know, her, you can see how the, um, uh, the she's breathing so hard that it's actually fogging up the inside of her her helmet. Her her head has, be, has become even more swollen. And actually, her the arms, you can see that her suit is almost taut now with the, uh, with, with everything, um, with like the uh, elongation of her, her arms, which of course is what we saw in the creature that crushed our yes co- colleague's head. So yes, uh, so um, Captain and Joe is going to take you another round to make it to the mess hall. Um, Captain Paul, uh, Johns, and um, uh, Clayton are are heading uh, are running with you. Uh, as you go. So Ernest, uh, back up to you. What are you doing? Um, you know, there's no hope for Reed, so I'm going to take another shot. Okay, go ahead. Uh, again, that's one, two, three, five. Did I getting the, what was the bonus for being proximate? Uh, plus three. Right, and that's 
Now four stress dice. All right. Oh, uh, cripe. No sixes, one stress die, one. All right. So, uh, assuming that you don't want to uh, use your story point for an automatic success. Oh, I think this have would be the good time to do that. Okay. You still have, otherwise, she's going to kill me. So, you still have to roll uh, panic. Uh, you still have to roll your panic. Uh, however, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a failure. It, uh, you only get a failure on your rolls. I think if it's over 10 is, is uh, what, what happens. So uh, go ahead and roll a D6 and add your current stress to it. I have four stress and rolled a four. All right. So eight. Uh, you, uh, as she's standing over you, um, you know, you, you raise up the gun pull the trigger and and hit her uh, again right square in the chest does not seem to be affecting her it, it, she staggers back uh you know maybe a foot or so uh but she definitely is uh you know still kind of angry and uh vent uh, kind of breathing harder even even more uh and with that you start to tremble um you know th- everything is just weighing down on you so so what that means is uh until that trembling stops all of your agility uh based skill roll are at a minus two okay <clears throat> so then it is uh to her she uh in so uh this turn uh, what she's going to do is she's going to she drops the shotgun and with both hands grabs the table and just whips it across the room uh you you know she was strong to begin with uh right. you did not you know this is beyond this is like a very solid metal table she just like lifted it up and threw it across the room captain paul and and joe uh you hear that you know this banging and clattering uh that was her her first turn uh her second turn is she's going to try to punch you um can i skitter backwards on my ass Yes, because you did not take a fast action. So, um, yeah, you uh, can you uh, kind of skitter back some more. Uh, that means for her fast action, she's going to have to move up uh, to you again. Uh, and then she, you know, kind of takes a swing at you. Sadly, her long arms are compensating for my... <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll your... Uh, you do have the, still the two armor, at least. No sixes. Okay. So you take two damage. Okay. I'm down to two health. Okay. So you, uh, as this happens, you know, she like brings up a fist and just does it straight into the mask. Uh, for the first time since you've been on this ship, you're just I'm assaulted the with the, the smell of the air. It's, it's very stale. Uh, you, you cough a little bit, mostly because you just got punched in the face and, you know, you have probably, you know, uh, safety glass all, all throughout your face. Uh, but uh, the, the, the air smells very stale. It's still a little bit cold, even though the, the heat has come on. Uh, but, you know, you are definitely assaulted with this. As and this a room happens, full of rotten food as well. Exactly. Uh, as this happens, uh, Captain Paul and Joe, you both make it into the room. So if, if both of you could also make uh, initiative rolls. 16. 20. All right. So, geez. <clears throat> okay. So, um, well, we start back up. Uh, and it starts with you, Captain. You, you, uh, you, you both kind of get there at the same time. Uh, you look into the mess hall. It was just like I described before, except uh, Reed is standing over Ernest. Uh, just kind of eat from her back, you can see she's like huffing. She's a um, and yeah. yeah, and you can see that uh, Ernest is just uh, his his mask has just gotten completely caved in. He's all bloody. Well, can my fast action then be to grab the shotgun that you dropped on the floor? Um, and, yeah, and oh, yeah. I'll put it up against the back of her head and pull the trigger. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll. Um, so this would be a ranged attack, uh, plus three, and then a shotgun. Let me see what it does. Where is ranged attack? Oh, I see it. Plus my stress? Yes, absolutely. And plus your agility? Yes. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I got one six and no ones. All right. Um, one second. Okay, just to, uh, to know... Oh, you actually get two bonus, uh, two dice uh, with that as well. So add another two dice. Go ahead and roll two more as well. I got two sixes. All right. Um, let's see here. She. All right. Uh, so that's. I said it does three damage. All right. So uh, you run up there, grab the shotgun, put it right to the back of her head and pull the trigger. Uh, the, the helmet uh, absorbs a little bit of the impact, but not enough to keep her head from just exploding out. Uh, Ernest, you, you see, you know, as you're kind of standing over, or as she's kind of standing over, you see the captain run up and do this. And just above you, uh, uh, splattering the wall are, are the remains of Reed's head. She kind of stands there for a second, wobbles, and then falls over. With that, we're jumping over to Dr. Flynn and Herb. You both were in the uh, the uh, the air shafts, um, uh, cleaning them out. Uh, you had basically gotten to the end uh, of uh, the work. Uh, you had gotten uh, it cleaned out uh, for the most part. Um, as you uh, started to uh, finish up, you both noticed this this uh, creature above you. Um, slowly starts to kind of emerge. You're not sure if it had always been there or if it had, uh, you know, kind of crawled out one of the air shafts that snake throughout the entire ship. It, uh, it this eyeless, uh, smooth eyeless head kind of, you know, comes into view uh, looking at both of you and it opens its mouth and its lo lower jaw just extends out and you see just these rows of, of teeth from the circular mouth. Uh, and it gets to go first. So it's going to drop down. It drops down right in between both of you. Actually, uh, did you both take a stress for this? Uh, I don't think don't, so. Don't believe I, you did. Yeah. So go yeah. ahead and, and take a, uh, add a, one more stress. It drops down between both of you. And let's see here. It is uh, going to attack her. Um, so. Uh, all right. You are still wearing a um, suit, correct? Yes. All right, so it's uh, it, it has this elongated tail behind it with a spike. Uh, it swings around uh, with the spike. Um, just uh, it comes to like a point at the end, and you can feel. Uh, go ahead and roll your your armor. Uh, did you uh, make any successes on that? Uh, do I? Sorry, roll two. Yes, roll two. Okay. Any stress dice or just the base? Just the base just, dice. Just the base okay. dice. Uh, no sixes. Okay. So as this happens, the you can feel it uh, go across your chest, this, this like razor sharp spike uh, of a tail go across your chest. Um, uh, Flynn, you can feel this warm liquid hit your face as uh, this happens to Herb. Herb, you take uh, two damage and you, you stumble back uh, a little bit. Yes. Um, I have my helmet on, though, don't I? Yes. Okay. So there's so it's a splatter. I'm not sure. So you see the splatter go go across your face, um, like, like blood, like bloody. It's 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 hard too hard. I mean, it's uh, liquid. It, you can't tell. It's very dark in here. Uh, oh. It just looks dark uh, on on your mask. Got it. Um, not only that, you have this creature in front of you, so you're not you're really focusing too much on, on oh, yeah. yet. Uh, and so that takes us to Flynn. What do you do? Um, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, Flynn, sorry. Okay, I, I grab for fast action, I grab mm -hmm. my my axe. Or actually, what's closer with my fast action? My my axe or the, the oh, no, the flamer is not going to work because that would engulf her. Well, remember the flamer isn't this this like flamethrower. It's it's more it's like a, a little yeah. Oh, it's like a hand torch. Okay, yeah. so I, I grab I grab for the the axe then that I should have not far from where I was okay. for fast, and then I'll just try to 
just like hack down on it, uh, you know, wherever it looks like it, I can hit it easily. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay, one second. And this is, uh, oh, oh, that's right. I'm not a combat person, am I? <laughs> uh, so okay. Would, I think it would just be strength. Just strength. <laughs> uh, plus, your, plus your trust die, of course. Oh, yeah. Hey, actually, there's an actual good thing about having a little stress. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see here. Can I can I uh, use the auto success after the roll? Or, or Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can use see. it whenever you want. Let's see if I can actually get a six there. Oh, come on. One, one, two, two. And both ones are on the stress dice. <laughs> well, the, uh, yeah. the, do you want it? So you, you are allowed to still use the, uh, the story point if you'd like. Okay, but that doesn't negate the two ones no. on the two. No, you're still, still going to have to roll panic. Oh, yeah, lots and lots of panic. Okay, so this is probably my last thing. So, all right, yeah, let's just uh, let auto, do that auto smash into it. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, a d6 and add your current stress to it. Even, even though you rolled multiple ones, you only have to, to roll one panic roll. Okay, so so I roll 1d6. 1d6, add your current level of stress. Of course, I got a six, so that's eight. <laughs> so eight? Yeah, eight. All right, so your, your um, axe still connects. As it connects, uh, the creature um, you know, definitely uh, appears uh, a little bit hurt, uh, but... Uh, the axe does not affect it as much as you uh, expected it uh, to. Uh, the the axe kind of went into it, its shoulders, and it is uh, you know because of that you uh, you the realization comes upon you uh, of what uh, is happening, and you start to tremble as well. And so all of your agility based rolls until this is over uh, are at a minus two. All right. That takes us to uh, the creature again. Uh, it sees Flynn right there. Uh, it had just swung an axe at it, at him, so he is. Uh, it is going to uh, attack again. Uh, it's going to. Uh, it it kind of uh, leans back on its haunches on all fours and then springs at you. All right, let's see here. All right. It uh, does one point of damage. Um, as it does, it s- grabs you and it me- jumps, w- holding you. Uh, Herb, you see this as it jumps right into the air shaft leading out of here. Uh, and that takes us to Herb's turn. Oh, uh, oh okay. wait, 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 I'm sorry. Um, Does my suit offer any potential armor against that? Like yes. The two? Yeah. Go, go ahead and, and do that. Come on, six now. Come on. Let's see a six. Of course not. Okay, no sixes. But no ones. So one point straight in. Ah! Uh, you do drop. Well, I mean, you you, you kind of had, still had. Uh, sorry. Hold on. All right, sorry, my mic got unplugged. Did you say you, you did not have any successes? Correct. I okay. failed on any sort of uh, armor save. Right. Uh, you. you um, it, it grabs you and starts dragging you. Uh, it leaps into the air shaft. Uh, uh, and then, Herb, uh, what are you doing? It's your turn. So I think during all this, um, I'm making sure to keep, I mean, to keep looking at what's happening, documenting what's happening. Uh, as I've put my hand and look at the milky white substance that's now leaking out of me. And I just kind of wipe my hand on my pants and I look up to where it went. And I just well, turned. It, it went to the shaft that you, yeah. uh, you both came out of. So it's okay. It's so it went like, through. Yeah. You, you can okay. still see it. It's just right there in, in there uh, kind of you know, trailing uh, Flynn with it. Okay. Uh, is there. Okay, so I think I, I lean my head down. And I'm just I'm documenting, you know, making sure the camera's picking up everything, and then I just slowly, if there's a air shaft door on this side, just shut it. So, so like the door that he the thing that it Flynn through. Yeah, yeah, because it's a, it, it's in my way out, right? Like they went yes. through my way out. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just shutting it so it doesn't come back. Okay. 
Uh, and is there another way out, like climbing up or down? Yeah, there, there are definitely more okay. shafts in, in this. You, you would have to climb up a little bit uh, to get to the next one, but you absolutely could. Yeah, well, first thing, uh, take this thing off because uh, it is just costuming to, you know, to, to conceal my true identity. Uh, and I begin to make my way. I'm going to go down and try to find an air shaft to get, to get back out into the hallways. Okay. Uh, Flynn, um, you get dragged into the shaft, uh, the air shaft. The creature then uh, uh, turns around, uh, lets, lets go of you, turns around and uh, tries to uh, attack you again. Uh, with this, it uh, kind of jumps back down on all of its haunches and uh, leaps at you. Uh, so go ahead and make a uh, save, or uh, sorry, your, your armor. Armor, okay. My powerful armor of two dice, and that's a fail on both. So it ran, so it's, you're in a very small shaft. Yeah, you know, it, it's just big enough for, for you all to crawl through. So it uh, basically mis, uh, in, interprets or, or uh, uh, how big it is and how much room it actually has to, um, to jump. And so it does leap at you, but as it does, it pushes you into uh, back through the uh, the, the air shaft uh, panel, which inexplicably now is closed. Uh, uh, but and you fall down into the air uh, into the uh, kind of the, the tank area uh, where you are at as well. Um, you can hear it almost make this hiss from within the air shaft, and then it goes silent. And as, as, you know, everything uh, kind of calms down for just the briefest of seconds, you notice that the liquid that was splayed across your uh, advisor is definitely white, not red. Oh. <laughs> going, uh, so, so uh, before we jump back to the others, uh, Dr. Flynn, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to try to uh, back out in the opposite direction, finding access to get away. Okay, there's no other uh, shaft in here. You can, you know, try to go up uh, somewhat or or down. Um, there, there is like a ladder, and there are other shafts uh, that okay. you can try to start going through. I will go down. I will go in the opposite direction of the alien creature. Okay. All right, so you're going to be crawling around the shafts for, for a little bit. Uh, same with you, Herb, as you're kind of crawling through the, the shafts. Uh, we jump back to the others. Uh, Captain Paul, Joe, and Ernest, as well as Johns and Clayton, are in the mess hall. Reed is lying there dead. Clayton is screaming, what happened? What is going on? What? Why did you shoot her? Look at her. She's transformed. What? That's that's not possible. We We all took the... The vaccine. Uh, there's. Uh, how how no, did really, you test that vaccine? Did you have six thousand? I don't know. Ed, your... Ask Flynn and uh, Ernest. You've got just blood uh, all over. Uh, just kind of, uh, you know, your your face isn't just like you know gushing blood, but uh, yeah, no, you've I've got, got you know, pieces take of glass the helmet off, over. get the glass out. I can't use her helmet because it's spattered with. Right. I'm breathing I, the stuff. Did do did we? see what Flynn did with the vaccine that he retrieved from the uh, lab? Flynn, I think you left it at the uh, in the bridge, didn't you? Yeah, I had, uh, yeah. There were six doses. Uh, I left three in a little pouch on the bridge, and I kept three on a pouch with me. That's, and yeah. then the captain uh, uh, used one from the bridge. So on the bridge, there should be two doses left. So Left I need to go directly location. to the bridge because you guys should look at the synth, Ava, yeah. who uh, I don't know how much of the 70 years she spent moving around and how much she spent drying out here, but we should see if we can get her head connected to something. I need immediately to get a shot on the off chance that it works. Okay. Now so before... if anybody wants to come to the bridge, please but i don't in in what seems like a rare uh moment of civility 
Clayton, uh, her face softens a little bit. She realizes just how much, uh, you know, uh, of a beating you took uh, and kind of uh, walks over and kind of starts to lift you up and say, come on, I'll, I'll take you. Um, there, there's probably a first aid kit up there as well. Thank you. All right. Uh, John's is uh, uh, staying back here. Uh, Captain Paul and Joe, what, uh, what would you like to do? Well, my intention was to beat the shit out of her and find out what the hell's going on, but you, she's helping Ernest. So, and actually, both Joe and Captain Paul, as you look at her, go ahead and take a point of stress uh, because this is actually the first time you've seen you know uh, something like this up close. Uh, uh, with before, you you only saw it in on the blurry images on the camera. Uh, like I described, Reed is her face is just very very swollen. Her arms, her her suit has actually ripped. Uh, I think her, her face arms. is all over the, the, the room. Well, what's point. left of her face, <laughs> yes, that, that is correct. Um, um, I, I think regardless of whether she's going to help Ernest or not, I kind of want to pin her up against the wall quickly with the shotgun in my hand and put it up under her chin and say, tell us what the fuck is going on. here. What have you people been doing? You're doing this to Clayton? Yeah. Uh, she her, gets very wide eyed. She's like, I don't know what the hell is going on. I didn't. You know the... what the hell is going on. You, your company's been doing this to us all. What the fuck is going on? My company. You're part of the company as well. I'm part of the company nowadays. You're part of the company 80 fucking years ago. Look, we. what were you people doing here that are creating monsters of some sort? You trying to create an army so that you can no, go after we... the other factions. And at this point, John uh, kind of speaks up as well and says, look, we didn't do this. We, we were here on some uh, expedition to, you know, create monsters or, or something like that. We went down there uh, to, to that planet to, to gather up the, that, that, that chemical that you saw, the, the, the black chemical that, that you saw in the, uh, the, those urns. That's what we gathered. And then people started to change. The animals on the planet had already started to change. This is not something that we did on purpose. That's why we created the vaccine. Why would we create a vaccine if, yeah, if we had done this? How do you create a vaccine for something that you've never even... It's an alien virus of some sort. You should have blown yourselves all to kingdom come. Then my <laughs> ship would still be around and we'd all still be alive. Look, I don't know how... how you know, why the vaccine didn't... Uh, isn't working or, you know, maybe... Maybe we didn't take it just like... Uh, you know, the doctor didn't take it. Uh, I, I don't know. I would like access to mother. Go ahead. Well, give me your fucking key. He kind of reaches down and he takes the key and kind of throws it at you. When I take it and then I let her go. All right. Go she's, help Ernest. She's ticked off. Uh, you can tell she's, she's her face is back feet red. I've lost, uh, I've lost members of my crew. I've lost my ship. Talk about picks pissed off. Uh, Ernest, okay, I didn't she, blow her fucking head off. <laughs> well, uh, well, as soon as the shotgun's away, she kind of half drags you out of the room. She's kind of lost any uh, uh, sensibilities or, or kindness uh, in in the last few minutes. Uh, but she's still taking you towards the bridge. Uh, Joe, what what are you doing during all of this? Uh, I was honestly, I was just watching it all happen with a very shocked look on my face. Cap, Cap, what do we do? I don't, what do we do? I've, I've done my best to already contact Wayland, uh, Wayland Yotani. It won't be here for a while. We got to get the ship moving. Yeah. But I mean, the air scrubbers and we've got, we've got holes in the hole and I don't. Well, as far as I know, they're, they're working on the air scrubbers, getting them up and, and running. But we don't know what's going on in there. So yeah, obviously. Yeah. I don't, uh... I'm sure everything's okay over there. Sure. Yeah, I, they know what they're doing. Um, I want to get I want to get in and talk to mother. OK, the, the mother, the access to mother is all the way up on deck A. Right. Um, and so uh, you go to mother, I'll go help on the bridge. All right. All right. So uh, you start heading, uh, Captain Paul, you start heading up to mother. Uh, Joe, uh, Ernest and Clayton are a little bit uh, farther ahead. Um, as uh, as um, you start to leave, uh, John's kind of grabs your shoulder and it kind of pulls you back a little bit. 
uh, waiting for Captain Paul to, to leave the room. And as, as he does, he looks at you and says, look, I don't know what's going on here, but are you sure you can trust your captain? That was pretty outrageous for somebody who's supposed to be in charge. What the fuck are you talking about? This, this whole thing is insanity. Your people are attacking our people and he's fucking right. You, you all should have just killed yourselves. We're all fucking doomed now. Get the fuck out of my face, Johns. All right, whatever. He kind of, you know, throws his hand up. Um, while I'm thinking about it, too, uh, uh, Flynn, uh, Joe, and Paul, go ahead and make air supply rolls on your uh, suit. A lot. I of don't have happened. my suit on anymore. I oh, that's right. You message. don't. Send a message, Tyler. Okay. No yeah. sixes, no ones. No ones. No sixes okay. either. All right. Good. Then, then you're both okay. All right. Oh, so as uh, yes. I, I, I messaged you uh, a message just earlier. Just wanted to make sure that registered. All right. Um, yes. All right. So with that, uh, let's jump back over to Herb. Uh, where you're, you're crawling through the air shafts, where would you like to come out? Uh, I'll say that you can come out anywhere on... Uh, you uh, on deck uh, D or C? Uh, okay. Um, probably C. I want to get to an access terminal. So I want to come out as close to an access terminal as, a, or, you know, as I can. So that would, on deck C, that would either be uh, likely in the reactor relay control or within the cargo office. Okay. Yep. Then that's where I'm stopping. Uh, as I'm going down, uh, pop my helmet off because mm-hmm. I don't, don't need that. Um, but I want to keep, if it stores like any kind of memory for like the uh, camera feed, you know, I'll, I'm going to keep that. I don't know if that's, or if it's how that works, but I don't want to lose that. But um, I crawl down and I think I, I'm coming out on C, you know. Okay. So you, so you come out, uh, we'll, we'll say you kind of did like a little bit of a loop and you come out uh, right on the uh, balcony of uh, where the uh, right, right near where you had entered uh, the maintenance shafts uh, mm-hmm. uh, right next to the catwalk. Um, and so you can either kind of uh, walk around. You can actually go go either direction to the uh, reactor relay control or the cargo office to to access the terminal. Um, I think I'll go around to the cargo office. Okay. That way I got a door that I can shut behind me at least, you know? Okay. So it it takes you, you know, not too long to, to get there. Um, Dr. Uh, Flynn, uh, as this is going on, you're crawling through the shafts too. Where would you like to come out? Uh, you could, again, you could come out on deck C or D, or if if you'd like, because you were kind of panicky and, and that, uh, I can tell you where you come out. Um, do, yeah, if you could do that, my uh, my deck plan is malfunctioning. Okay, right yeah, now. absolutely. It, my, it it's perfect that it's malfunctioning. Do I still have comms, or did that get damaged in my suit? That's yeah. You you still have comms. Okay, so because uh, I, I don't, your your suit didn't break. Um, okay, despite it, you know, uh, kind of doing everything to you. Uh, so as as I'm going down, trying to be quiet and semi stealthy um um uh, i can talk in my helmet and not be broadcasting everywhere right so it's this is just internal right yes okay perfect so, you, I just, so you can control who can listen to you or, or who you're talking to uh uh so just to make it easy we'll say that the, the suits allow you to do one-to-one communication or one to everyone or just completely shut it off Okay, it'll just be one to everyone because I have no idea who's left alive or what. So, um, um, uh, to anyone who's out there, um, Herb and I were attacked by this horrible alien creature down in our uh, the air shaft while cleaning. Uh, we've got separated. Um, I, I'm wounded, but I'm climbing down. I'm not sure where Herb went. I, I think you probably know this already, but I think. Herb is a is a synth as well as his uh, his blood seemed to spew out white, not not red. But I don't think that's a problem because anyway, uh, we're we're broken up. So be wary. I think the creature might be tracking me. 
I'm trying to head to, do I see like a door number coming up like C2 or something like that? So you uh, actually, yes. Uh, so you uh, come out um, on uh, the, so somehow you um, hid your way to towards the, the front of the ship. Uh, you, you were going through the, the air shafts for, for a little while, you know, kind of panicking just, you know, every once in a while glancing over your, your shoulder into the the darkness behind you. Um, however, by the time you get out, uh, you're actually in the front of the ship. You see that you're at the, the main junction at at the front of the ship. Uh, and your, your trembling has stopped by this point as well. Oh, thank God. Same with Ernest too. So from here, I'll, I'll just try to move towards the bridge. If, if no one's going to respond to my transmission. Is anybody going to respond? So everybody sure. can hear uh, him, Ernest, uh, even though yours is broken. Well, you're on the bridge by this point, and so you can hear it kind of coming over the, the loudspeakers in the bridge. Can I hear? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Herb, you can hear this, too. Can I hear him, though, like, because I have a helmet off, can I hear that he's on this level? Uh, probably not. That's okay. uh, You know what? I will... You know what? You, you are a synth, so... Yeah. I will let you make an observation roll. Okay. Uh, do I do stress dice anymore? You do not. Okay. <laughs> Game got a lot easier for me. Uh, dang it. No sixes. All right. So, um, so uh, just to, uh, so yes, obviously uh, Herb uh, was a synth in disguise. Uh, that also means that Captain Paul, Joe, and Ernest, you take a point of stress because you did not know he was a synth. Uh, none of you did. Um, additionally, do, just go on. I'm sorry. I was say, does that actually bother us? Synths uh, are fairly common. It, it bothers you because the, the synths, yes, they are very common. However, he lied you, to us. You, they, yeah, yeah some, something is going on where if since don't lie uh uh and so because or it's it, unless they're programmed to so something else is is going on here um but yeah okay um so uh flynn yeah you're at the front of the ship uh you recognize that you're still on the same level you actually you you got up a level because remember you had crawled down uh you're at junction c and so you can start kind of crawling up towards the uh the other two uh to level b which is where the um bridge or yes, where the bridge is. Ernest, Clayton uh, kind of pulls you in, uh, sets you down on one of the chairs. Uh, you can, as she kind of walks away from you to try to, uh, to go and grab a first aid kit that, that's right there. Uh, you can see that she's trembling a little bit. Um, she's obviously you know, pretty shaken up by what happened with the captain. Uh, as she comes over, she kind of uh, kneels down, opens up the first aid kit uh, and starts pulling out things and, and uh, kind of you know, cleaning up your face, bandaging up a little bit. You do gain one health back. As she's doing this, she looks at you uh, and says, listen, I don't like you and you don't like me. That's fine. But in the end, we're both uh, employed by Wayland yutani and we have a job here to do. I have a feeling that you're here to do the same job that I am, or at least if not, you at least want to get what get what's due to you to the company. Am I right? Or from the uh, company? Absolutely. I mean, we're all going through hell and we need to be compensated. Exactly. I didn't. I've never fired a gun at a human being before, but I'm not sure that Reed was a human being. Exactly. So you, so listen, that black liquid, whatever, whatever the hell it is, that is worth a lot of money to the company. Mm -hmm. Not only that, if we can get that back, we are going to be well rewarded. And look, if you, if you need compensation now, I've got a million dollars in my, uh, in my uh, room. You can have you can have it all. I don't give a I don't give a crap. But we need to get some of that and get it uh, into my uh, uh, my EVA my EEV uh, to and, and get out of here. That is the only way we're going to be compensated by this. I don't trust anybody, especially your damn captain, with what he just pulled. What do you think our chances of survival taking off on your better than staying on this ship? Look. I, you know, she kind of points over to the um, uh, to the, the display panels uh, in there. The, the, all this stuff needs to be repaired. 
Uh, you you yeah. do see that the the air is now back up to full functionality, but the reactor is um, you know uh, it, it's you know online because you helped kind of clean it up, but the engines are still off, uh, mm-hmm. and the comrade is still down. And she says, "Look, the only way that we're getting off the ship is if all that stuff gets repaired. With whatever the hell is going on with things loose on the ship, do you actually think that's going to happen? This is our best bet." How many? Seats were there in her shuttle? There were two shuttles on her little bay. There were, right? No, there was one shuttle with three seats. One shuttle with three sh- um, seats. But yes, with three seats. Um, do you know for a fact? Well, whether- hold on, let me let me uh, rephrase something. When, when you say seats, the, um, I mean cryo chambers. There, her EEV has uh, three cryo chambers on it. So it could possibly carry more people, but they would be in stasis or it's just a three person vehicle. I mean, you could technically have more people, but only three can be in stasis. Right. So if we took a synth, then they would just be bored. But um, But yeah. So do you have, could you say with any certainty, Clayton, whether or not Reed got the vaccination? I I, I don't know. Uh, Honestly, I, I, I think so. But then again, I also thought the doctor had had taken it. So mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe maybe she was with him on this and, and they weren't doing it. The only person we can ask is Flynn. He, he's the one who helped create this. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he should know all of these, 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 this information. Yeah, he didn't know whether that Cooper hadn't taken it, though, because he trusted him. If he trusted it, Reed, then. Exactly. Uh, with that, you, you both hear footsteps coming up the uh, uh, down the hallway. I mean, uh, and she kind of looks down and looks at you and, and uh, really fast says, just think about it, but we need to make a decision quick. And with that, Captain Paul, you walk into the room. Uh, Johns is uh, uh, slowly following you. Uh, he shows up about a minute later. Joe, let's jump over to you. Okay. Uh, you said you were going in the bridge, but you actually started to head in the opposite direction. Yes. Uh, yes, I am headed to the science labs. Okay. So that is down at the other end of the, uh, the hallway. Um, you get down to the science lab. Uh, what do you want to, uh, this is the same science. So this is going to be the same science lab as what you, uh, saw before. Um, actually I, I apologize. Let me, uh, Captain Paul, you were not, you did not show up by the bridge. You were going to see mother. I, I forgot about right. that, but John's does walk in at that point. Um, so, uh, but, uh, Joe, you go down to the science lab. Um, what are you looking for? Which one did you want to go to? Um, which one, there's one that does not have black goo everywhere, right? Correct. Uh, so there's, there's two science labs. We'll say one on the South and one on the North. Yes. The one on the South, that's the one that had the black goo everywhere. The one on the North looked like something, you know, had been burnt inside of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. the, uh, there is the remains of the, uh, a body in there that, that you saw right. that was just completely eviscerated with fire. And there was you know, like scorch marks all over the walls and, and things right. like that. But they both have like storage cabinets and stuff like that. Yes. That I can see like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go first for the scorched one and I'm opening every cabinet and I'm looking, <laughs> you know what I'm looking for. Um, so you, you start going through and, uh, just, uh, you know, going through every, and you, you do find, uh, in, in this one, you do find some, some things, but everything is just half burnt packages. The, the plastic syringes inside of them or the bottles have just been melted and burned. There's just nothing, uh, in this one, uh, that seemed to have survived the, the explosion or the fire or whatever was, it, was in there. All right. I'm going to go to the black goo lab then. And I'm trying very delicately to tiptoe around the goo if I can. Okay. And can um, do the you, same thing. You, you can, it's, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, uh, but the goo isn't just like covering the the entire floor. Uh, it, it's actually, you know, more to, um, you know, you're, you're able to move around. You right, get right. to a couple of the cabinets, uh, start start going through it. Um, at first, you're, you're not really finding anything. You're just pulling out like first aid kits and, uh, you know, bandaging materials and, uh, you know, other chemicals that are, you know, related to science and you know, like chemistry uh, experiments, chemicals, things like that. So you finally open another drawer. Uh, and you find a bottle of Naproleave. Uh, Naproleave is a injectable pain reliever. 
uh, that uh, you, you, you definitely know what this is. Uh, you do okay. have to inject it uh, into yourself in order to use it though. Right, does it have the same effects as the other stuff I carry? Oh, it's much better. You've had it before. Oh, oh better. It's okay, good. Much, much better. Okay. You actually get a little bit okay. excited that you find this. Yes. Great. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I pocket it and I'm and I'm headed back to the bridge. Okay. So uh let's jump over to Captain Paul. You uh you're climbing up. You 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 swipe the card into um a mother's chamber you're on deck a uh the the chamber beyond uh you step in and this wind kind of go blows down on you and this white mist uh, surrounds you you know this is like a sterilization process as you move forward down the hallway it's a very short hallway you get to the next uh doorway swipe the card again and it opens up into this octagonal or octagonal uh, room uh, where at the center is a chair uh, and mother's terminal is right there in front of it. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll set down in the, uh, in the chair. Um, now, can we assume, although when I look at my, when I look at my character, I don't like see computer technology expert or anything like that. But no, but you, I, go on. I'm sorry. If the captain is the one who interacts with the computer, does he know all about how it works? Oh yeah, yeah. You would absolutely know how to interact with mother to um, on uh, how you know all this would would go right. and and. and so my first thought in coming in is that there's probably a uh, uh, it, it's not going to recognize me because um, it has doesn't have updated files. They're 70 years old. No, uh, but, but you you do have, have John's card, right? Okay. Yeah. Actually, so um, when in order to so are you going to activate? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll um, have to activate it, and then I'll have to put myself in as the current captain. And uh, yeah, so actually, when you when you enter in the uh, uh, sorry, when you put in the card, it actually automatically recognizes you, or actually more specifically, it recognizes the, the card uh, as John's as card. And it, uh, you know, it kind of blips up and says, welcome, uh, second officer John's, how may I help? Like this little blipping cursor on the screen. Um, it, it, it's also, you know, right. we'll, we'll just say for those purposes as voice activated too. Uh, Well, my guess is it's not going to necessarily recognize my voice, but I'll I'll use the opportunity to put myself into the computer as uh, unauthorized. Uh, okay. Just so that there's no problem later. Okay. Um, what is the current mission of the Kronos? The uh, I, you hear these uh, little bleeps and you know blips uh, from the, uh, and some of the lights all around the room uh, you know go on and off and then on the screen uh, it appears current mission is to return to Earth with obtained archaeological uh, chemicals. Um, I guess I'm going to try to find out as much information. So there's probably a lot of questions like. Uh, um, you know, checking the current date according to the, you know, the computer should know uh, when did the, when was the science thing ejected? Uh, what reports were there to Wayland um, about, I'm trying to find out as much information as to what was going on. What were they doing? Were they experimenting? Were they, you know, um, playing there with the so the in terms of the date, the the mother knows the the exact date and time. You know that that is absolutely correct. Uh, the you you asked about the um, uh, science module uh, yeah, well, that was e that was ejected uh, basically shortly after takeoff from the, from the planet. Uh, within I think uh, well, two hours after takeoff from the planet, uh, she's aware of the infection. So when you so specifically, how are you going to ask that? Um, well, I guess I'm asking for uh, science logs of what went wrong, and you know, 
what exactly happened. In fact, infection occurred. Um, science module was ejected. Threw in into stasis. I probably know most of this already. Um, so, so the way that mother puts it when, when you ask uh, about basically what happened uh, is she, uh, mother responds, a breach of quarantine occurred uh, during analysis of chemical agent A0-3959X.91-15. Subsequent deaths uh, in the crew resulted because of the breach of quarantine. Um, uh, did... Uh... Did she have a protocol that if we tried to tap into her computer that she would destroy our ship? So is that how you're asking? Oh, I, guess I don't know exactly how to ask it, but I want to find out if she destroyed our ship. She overrid our computer somehow and destroyed it. So when you ask about the U.S. CSS Montero, um, Mother responds that uh, does not give an indication that she uh, caused the the reactor issues. Um, she does state that uh, when, when you ask about it, uh, the reactor issue, uh, the reason it exploded. Uh, mother states reactor uh, explosion uh, uh, started uh, due to uh, USCSS Montero's mother's uh, order. 966 uh, instructions due to special order 966. So special order 966, but it was a Montero order, not, not this computer order. Yes. Who in the hell could activate? Um Uh, can she give us a status report on what needs to be repaired on this ship to get it going? Yes, she says the camera rays and the engines need repaired. All okay. other, uh, uh, so she says that all other uh, uh, functionality is at optimal uh, or at functional levels. Okay. Um, can she transmit a, a continual message towards? Uh, Wayland Yotani, that uh, negative comrades must be repaired for comrades. long term transmissions okay. to occur. All right. Or long distance um, transmissions. All right. I'm, I'm a little, I, I don't think I can think of anything else to ask her. Okay. Um, but I will, I will head back. Uh, our repair guy is apparently a scent. Um, I don't really care. That actually makes it more efficient, but I'll go back and okay. uh, where was he last seen? Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to patch into Dr. Flynn. Okay. Uh, before you do that, Ernest, uh, can you do me one favor and give me a stamina check? Certainly. So this would be Ooh. your uh, stamina plus uh, strength plus any panic. Or stress die, I'm sorry, stress die. I have five stress dice, two strength dice, and no stamina dice, so good luck. I don't know where that went. I have to replace that. All right, uh, so my regular dice, nada, um, and stress dice, no ones or sixes. Okay. Fives. Um, I, I would like to ask Clayton how much of that obviously extremely dangerous black fluid we would need to take. Well, so it's, John's is in the room with you now. Oh, so right. anything you say, right. he will be able to hear. So instead, I will ask about uh, getting... W w did you see where Flynn stuck the vaccine? And did you both take it? Yeah, the vaccine's in there with you. And she says, yes, they both took it. John, and John's also looks like he agrees that he took it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But then I'm going to uh, ask her to shoot me in the bicep while I turn my head because I don't like needles. So, and, you know, she does. All right. I uh, also want to find an EVA suit soon, but 
Okay. And that's my next. All right. Uh, Herb, let's jump back to you. Okay. So uh, once I get to an access panel, uh, considering I get to one, I am wanting to, I'm wanting to download everything I can uh, and prepare to transmit it, you know, to, uh, I guess it's LaSalle Bio National, uh, every, all bits of information I can uh, about what has happened here, the feed for my helmet, everything. Now I imagine if at any point I need to make a roll, let me know before I just go speculating. Yeah, go ahead and make a contact roll. Okay, I'm actually good at that. Uh, I think I have a plus one contact from last section, last session, as long as that carries over. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so, yeah. It, it definitely carry carries over. Uh, and and just so um, because you kind of turned into um, the the android or revealed yourself as the android, did you modify your stats? Yes, uh, I did. Okay. I perfect. Just yep. want to make sure. Yep. Uh, I ended up with one six on that roll. All right. Perfect. So you uh, are able to uh, a- access the information within the system. Um, you also. Uh, are able to uh, basically see that um, th- this uh, is an older version of Mother. It has not been updated in a while. And so there are essentially vulnerabilities w- within Mother so that if, if something happened and you needed to, uh, say, upload yourself into the system, you would be able to. Okay. Uh, I imagine I find out the long distance comms are down though. Yes. Yeah. You, you, okay. also, you also find out that the engines and the long distance comms are still uh, non-functional. Okay. Then I would want to download everything in a way that uh, I could potentially take it with me uh, were I to get off the ship. Okay. So. Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to take uh, a while for you to start downloading, you know, as much uh, information and data uh, as you can, but you are able to do that. Yep. Uh, also, I would I feel it's uh, important to note that I did not grab my shotgun before making my hasty exit. Right. Um, at this point in time, Flynn walks into the uh, bridge. Um, Ernest, you you see him come in, uh, and, and at this point in time too, Captain Paul, you said you were going to try to bring uh, Flynn up on comms uh, as he's walking into the bridge. Is, is when this happens. All right. Well, I'm I'm at one stair level up. So, uh, Doctor Flynn. Oh, Captain. Uh, where's the last place you saw Herb? Oh, it was in the uh, the bottom of the scrubbers. So we were just wrapping up with the with the first section, and then, then that then that that big gigantic alien descended upon us and it, it attacked Herb. And I tried to get it off him, and and I swung my axe and. And uh, it attacked me and it dragged me for a while. I managed to get loose, but I, it was all so quick. I, uh, I, I did see her, her get, uh, get a gash across his chest. That's when I saw the white, it would later appear to be white, uh, white blood come from him. And, but, and uh, you, you all can see that like white milky liquid dried across his helmet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where, that's the last where, I saw of him. Was he in the shaft when you left him? Or when he when you got pulled away, uh, yeah, he we were both together at the bottom of the shaft, finishing our first cleaning. Uh, we made great progress, but then that thing just came down. I mean, we, we had no time to think. I I had no time to we we had no time to talk and make a plan. We were just separated in in fighting the thing off. I'm I'm gonna cut Flynn off because he just talks too much. Um, Herb, are you there? Herb. No response. Okay. I realize, Herb, you might be damaged and you might not be able to respond. Uh, nobody cares your ascent. We just need you to help repair the ship. Herb, you, you can't, so even though you took off the, the helmet, you can, um, you know, kind of hear uh, it, it come, the, the, the talk. So, yeah. Willfully ignoring and downloading. All right. All right. Well, we need the ship repaired and Flynn's the, I mean, uh, Herb's the only one who can really do a good job. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the air shaft on this level, which is a. Oh, uh, uh, all right. Yeah. You're showing. Okay. And. Uh, Are you announcing this? 
uh, no, I'm just, I'm going to go looking for her. At this point, I have no idea that he's a fucking traitor, but. Uh, um, he is unresponsive. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, he's been damaged a little, but he's a, he can help. He's a synth. He's honest. So and, you're just leaving without telling anybody where you're going? Well, you all know I'm on a, uh, I, I'll be in contact eventually. But, um, you, and we're hearing open comms in the bridge still? Probably. Yes. Um, so I've, uh, I've got my shotgun. <clears throat> So uh, Clayton and Johns and I are on the bridge, which isn't very potent. I'm going to try to find another suit because it provides a little protection against whatever is running around here. Oh, and yeah, I'm sorry, Flynn's here too. Um, oh yeah, we found, but you know, before the shooting, we found Ava. If anybody, where the hell's the? Where's the pilot? If anybody has any skill with machines and we can get Ava up and running, she can probably tell us a lot what, about what happened and I'm, help repair the ship. I'm actually pretty good at uh, repairing. Uh, I, I, I'm a little bit skilled in that. All, all you need is her head. We can plug her in and talk to her. Yeah, yeah that would be very helpful. Um, it's, it, you know, I, I want to find another suit because the, it's still cold and it smells like shit on this entire vessel. Also, um, yeah, I do have something to say to everybody. It's Captain. Apparently, Mother on this ship did not sabotage the Montero. So we have a hidden synth and we have a hidden saboteur. Something, yeah, something was triggered in Mother on our ship. Uh, what was the order number? Special nine, order 966. 966, which destroyed our ship. Captain. So somebody activated that. Uh, yeah. Probably one of the uh, crew of this ship. Probably Clayton. Because I hate fucking Clayton. <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense, though, because we, we, we came to and we spoke with you. And, and it was just shortly after um, uh, it was shortly after one of our members had that creature erupt from it that uh, the Montero had that alarm sound. There would have been no time for us to any of us to go there. Well, we never saw what happened to the thing that attacked our crew member That's by the true. reactor core. That's true. Our, have you, Dr. Flynn, in your experience, are these things when they transform, are they still intelligent? They're they're partially intelligence but they they are filled with rage uh, captain to be clear reed would have had a lot easier time killing me with the shotgun as a gun rather than as a club so i guess yeah, so most I think likely if it was one of those things they would have just beat up the computer and not uh reprogrammed it it's a damn peculiar Ernest, i'm, I'm trying i'm trying to find her Oh, I we personally need, don't care if he's a synth. We need him to help prepare the ship. Well, we, we need, I recommend, Captain, uh, uh, that creature was huge and it, it, it got both of us good. I mean, if it's you by yourself, even with a shotgun, I don't think you'd stand much of a chance. I, I don't oh. see that we've got much of a choice. We've got to risk it or we're all going to die anyway. Well, well it's, it's true, Captain, though. Sorry. Uh, if, if, uh, the unit that we knew as Herb Coleman was damaged enough that it's just drying out in some tunnel somewhere. Uh, you know, finding that body won't be of any use, whereas does we can any, directly go to where we know Ava is. Does, does anybody else have any kind of uh, heavy machinery repair or? Uh, you know, for uh, repairing uh, since it would be a, a, a contact. Oh, oh, I meant I, for the ship, the ship. Oh, the, the ship. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we've got to be able to repair the reactor and the comm system. Ernest, the comm me... system first. Yeah. But before Nobody we has... do, if you, if you don't mind, Ernest, uh, you look kind of banged up. I can, I can help you. I, I'm a medic. I can quickly bandage you up. Johns, do you know anything about uh, the ship's reactors? 
So just uh, just to let you you know, because it sounds like you're kind of making some plans around this, repairing the comms array uh, is a contact role, and you do need to go outside the ship in order to do that. Uh, for the engines, you also need to go outside the ship, uh, but it's a heavy heavy machinery role instead. Yeah, and I got nothing in either. Flynn, uh, Flynn you've got comms. I'm I'm pretty good with com tech. I I've uh, I'm a research scientist, medic, comms tech. That's that whole side I'm really good with. If I've got if, a little if, experience in that as well. If you can get um, the comms going, then we can call it make a distress call. Right. We've already made one, but it was cut off when the Montero was blown to smithereens. Mother, um, Clayton uh, healed me one. Can uh, Powell heal me in a, a second, or is that first aid already done? That is what I am checking right now. I believe I, I want to say that the first aid is already done, but let me, I, I don't want to rob but you. We're of used that. to so from Call of Cthulhu, yeah. I think. Give, and give me if, one second. And I guess in the similar area, if I could perform first aid on myself if that's allowed because uh, yes you you can um i am not seeing it in here so we're just going to say that yes you can so yeah yeah well i'll, I'll let you so Thank if you, you want to do it to, to both uh they are both medical aid roles i get tons of dice for this and remember to include your stress die okay roll this batch there's one six this batch. There's another six, and then oh, bam, two stress dice. Whew, no ones. So I got two sixes. Two, and this was against two, uh, yourself or Ernest? Uh, this was for myself because that was allowed. I'm not sure if it's yeah. allowed for. Uh, so you recover uh, up to two points. Uh, you don't go over what your your maximum was or what you started with. Uh, and yes, I, I will let you. Uh, do it uh, against Ernest. I, I I don't I can't remember if it's right or not, but I'm not going to spend the time to look up it. So we're just going to say yes. There's one six, and there's no sixes there, and then stress dice, no ones. Okay, no ones, no sixes. So one six for so Ernest, you gain a, a point of health back as the actual doctor comes in and uh, kind of uh, fixes you up just a little bit more. Uh, Joe, at, at this point, um, you know, you've kind of heard all of this uh, over the, the radio. You, you've gotten your um, uh, the nap relief. Uh, were you just going <laughs> going to head back? Um, so I, there is one thing I want to do. So I want to grab mm -hmm. um, any med kits that we do have that I can easily like just hold on how big they are. But um, you said there was at least one med kit I'm going to grab. Uh, well, we'll, we'll say that between all of them there, you're able to put together one med kit. OK, I'll put together a med kit. And I remember when we peeked into the window here, we saw, I saw a card sitting in the goo. Yes. Do I see it now? Yes. Yeah. That's going to catch my eye before I step out. Um, is there some kind of like a I don't know, kind of fashion, some kind of grabby thing? So I don't actually have to put my own hands into the goo. Uh, I, I will say that, yes, you can, you can kind of uh, pull together something that sure. will allow you to, you know, Right, right. You know, like scoop it out or, or grab right. It out. And can, if the science lab has a um, like a sink, which I probably imagine they might uh, like walk, rinse it off, get the goo off of it. Is it the captain, the former captain's um, like credential card? Uh, yes, it is. OK, I'm going to pocket that and okay. take a minute. And actually, I'm going to use the nap relief on myself. I'm just going to inject it now. OK, so you, you inject it in, into yourself. Your stress goes to zero. Uh, and you have, tell you what, give me a D6 roll. Okay. That is a six. All right. So you've got, uh, we'll say you have four more doses. Awesome. And then I'm going to, I'm headed to the bridge now. Yeah. And, and yes, yeah, spacesuits do have, well, you, you do have some <laughs> pockets or, or something like that, that you, you could do. Um, all right, then you start heading to the bridge. Yes. Uh, you start heading uh, heading up. So you you are on uh, the science labs on deck B. Uh, as you kind of make your way down, uh, if you have the map uh, down the side the la the hallway for that, you you start I'm gonna say north to the front the front of the ship. Uh, start heading down that hallway. You get to about where yeah you know, after a couple hallways. Uh, to where uh, it says living area. This is about in the middle of the ship. Give me an observation roll. Sure thing. Mm 
Uh, no successes. Can I push the roll? It takes yes, on can. one stress, but I'm going yeah, to You push can push the roll. It takes one stress and you actually get to include that stress die in this okay. uh, roll as well. And remember, I believe you do still have your uh, automatic success too uh, yes. with the store point. This doesn't feel important. Two successes, no ones. All right, perfect. Uh, so just a reminder. Um, yeah, so so uh, the first success uh, allows you to succeed at, at the role, but the second you get to do an observation stunt. So basically you get to ask uh, a question um, about the, the situation of what's going on. But before you do, let me kind of explain what's going on. Sure. Uh, you hear from um, the side of the ship um, or the, down the hallway, the, the, the hallway you're in uh, kind of goes um, the, the length, not length, um, the, the width of the ship. You hear from the far end on uh, the left, uh, a metallic noise. Uh, and you uh, you look over the the lights have you know started to come on now so you can see pretty well and you see that one of the air shaft uh, grates has fallen and crawling out of the uh, shaft is this uh, creature the same creature that Flynn described uh, shiny skin uh, very smooth skin and as it crawls out it looks directly at you or at least its face turns directly at you it really doesn't right, have right, eyes right. Uh, but you do get to ask a question okay um is there like a, a list of questions the, the questions that it gives is is it coming for me are there any more of them close by how do i get in past away from it or if you can think of something else you'd like to ask um i don't suppose it's it's seen me right because i was going to ask yes. before you said that if i could take the surprise moment to just hide okay um then uh, I guess well, you I know what I, I i so i will say if you would rather use that for your stunt you can do that you okay can, you can hide yeah i'm gonna yeah i'm just gonna i see it and i'm i'm backing away somewhere quick to hide <laughs> so where with where you're at uh well it, it uh we'll say that there are a couple doors nearby that lead into like a bunk room okay um uh, or like bunk uh, like, like little uh, uh crew, crew rooms or whatever yeah crew rooms yeah so, i'll, I'll yeah. duck in one of those yeah. all right so so you duck into into one of those um it's uh the the door to the the crew room that you're in uh as soon as you go in um the lights uh, go on because uh, they're they're triggered by uh okay. motion um but the door shuts uh you there is a window there uh that, that you can kind of peek out uh, if you want or you can try to cover it or you know what, what would you like to I'm, do i'm turning off the light like, turn off turn off, turn off, turn off. <laughs> so you quickly turn off the light the light goes out um, and, uh, you're just going to kind of stand there to the side. What I'm, I kept it. Oh, it, it, I, I apologize. You do also take a point of stress for seeing yeah, this. Absolutely. This the first absolutely. time you see this uh, captain, you hear, uh, Joe, uh, this thing is on, it's on, it's on deck B. It's on deck B. That thing, whatever attack bell and Coleman, it's on deck B. Deck B. We're on deck B. It, it, uh, like by the crew quarters, by the captain suite. Okay, because everybody's on deck B except me. Yeah, I know. Um, Harker, 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 I'm do coming. you hear me? That thing, that creature is on our deck. Oh, shit. I don't have a suit yet. Um, uh, and I, you're coming over live up here on the bridge. So, yeah, I'm glad you're whispering. Um, your exact location? At one of the crew bunk spaces near the captain's suite. All right, I'm uh, coming down. Do you have the shotgun? Yes, I do. I have, I have a gun too. I just I'm trying not to get it. I don't. So as as you're saying this, uh, Joe, you can hear uh, on the great the metallic grates outside the uh, over the room you're in uh, these these kind of steps uh, as the the creature starts to move down the hallway it gets to where you're at uh, at the uh, at the door and it, you can kind of either see, I mean are you looking out the window how, how are you doing this or are you just kind it, of if I hear it out? if I hear it getting close to the door I'm like ducking and flattening myself up against the door okay. so if it's looking through it can't see me <clears throat> you you hear it stop. Uh, right uh, in front of you, uh, in front of the door. And 
for a second or two, you hear nothing. And then you hear it start to move on. Uh, Captain, uh, you are you were in the air shafts on uh, deck A uh, when when the, this kind of call came in. Are you going to try to make your way to the nearest, like getting out of the air shafts, or are you going to try to go down in order to to get to it? What what are you doing? Um, I can actually climb down inside the air shaft, can't I? Yes, there's yeah, there's, yeah. There's definitely ways to to get. I'll down. just go quickly down to the the next level B. And I'll go out through the vent. Um, okay. I should know the orientation of, well, I don't know the orientation of this ship very well, but hmm. um, I'm guessing. So I'll, I'll give it a 50% chance that I go the wrong way. Um, so I come out in the other direction from the captain's cabin, but. Uh, I'm going to try to make my way to, to where that area is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so you come out uh, very near the, uh, where the, the hallway by the corporate suite is. So, so you're actually, you know, pretty close to where uh, Joe is. Uh, okay. Ernest uh, and Flynn, what were you doing when this call came in? You, you could hear this too. This was over the. Uh, yeah, everybody. it was just wrapping up um, medically tending to myself in earnest. Ernest, you're on mute. I, you know, I'm trying to remember, we knew there were three EVA suits and we collected those. They were by the labs. And we also found some somewhere else. And I do want to have a backup because I don't, mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel pretty exposed being the only person breathing the air in this vessel um clayton do you remember where the other functional suits were nobody took the one that cooper uh was trying to put on when he blew up so there's one in the cryo chamber and look you know you've got um, a map of the ship uh there with you you do see that uh, just outside the bridge uh, in one of the vestibules on the opposite side of the ship of where the armory was is uh, another area where there is uh, suits or supposedly suits. Uh, the, and that reminds me, Clayton, I have found Ava in the mess hall, but there was also a synth in the weapon in the, in the arsenal room. Do you have any idea who that might have been? You so you, you didn't actually find a synth there. You found, found synth, synth blood. fluid. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, right. So, uh, John's Clayton. If either of you are interested, because I don't think anybody should be traveling alone, I want to go and pick up uh, one of the remaining suits. Might we might be able to uh, increase our? Are there? Um, units on the ship that allow you to refill oxygen cartridges for the suits it takes it, a there shot. is but it, it's one of those it, you have to take off the suit to, to do it and it takes a full shift of work so roughly yeah. six to seven hours but we might want to start charging up suits because we know we're going to have you know we'd have to do external work and so on so let's be, yeah flynn Johns, Clayton, if you want to start this process, I think that, you know, I want to get suited up. We want to do repairs in the ship. And then we also want to get Ava online. I have some experience with contact, so I can help with the Ava project. I just want to be as protected as I can be yeah. before we start that. That's a good plan, uh, Ernest. I'll, I'll be more than happy to work on uh, Ava as well. I pretty first all right so uh you you head out into the hallway uh towards the the vestibule with the other eva suits you find out you find that there are two suits in there that look uh functional um so you right. are able to kind of put that on if you want good i'm um, going to suit up i'm really gonna i mean i it, i also don't want clayton to take john's off to escape in her pods so i need to if they're not if she, you know, I'm going to encourage her to come with. 
Oh, she's she's hanging by you. She you kind of get Good. the idea that she's waiting for a time. An up to... or down. Uh huh. Very good. All right. So uh, as this is going on, uh, Captain, you get to the uh, deck B. Uh, Joe, you. Uh, um, actually, Joe, give me another observation roll. Right. Uh, two successes, no ones on this round. Okay, so um, you uh, you sit there for what seems like a long time, but in reality was probably only you know half a minute, and you don't hear any more uh, movement out the door. Uh, Captain, you have just exited the air shaft uh, in the hallway uh, just uh, north of where um, Joe was saying she was. What would you like to do? I'm moving towards where I think she is. I, I'm looking for anything that's moving. Um, and I know what her, you know, EVA suit looks like. So if I see her EVA suit, I'm not going to shoot. But there's only two directions that thing could come from, and that's ahead or behind. So mm-hmm. there's nothing behind me. There's nothing ahead. I'm going to keep going. Um, I have to go through the door to go into the yes. hallway that her the, the uh, door is the door is closed. Okay. So I, I open up the doorway and tactically I look in both directions. You you so look in both directions and the hallway is empty. Okay. Um so then I will move towards the captain's cabin, still being very careful of anything moving. And then uh I'll, uh, I'll, you know, standing next to the door, I'll look back over my shoulder through the, the glass into the room. And I'll, uh, Joe, are you there? Yeah, she, it's gone. It's gone. I don't see anything. Okay. But where is it? Where is it? It's not in the hallway. Shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm opening the door then and stepping out into the hallway, but I've got my gun and I'm just looking around. Uh, both of you give me observation rolls. Observation. With stress dice? One success. Yes. Jesus, I've got more stress dice than I've got. <laughs> I've got one success. Yeah, one success, okay. Uh, I got one success and I got one stress failure. All right, go ahead and roll panic. Okay, and how do I do panic? Uh, roll a d6 and add your current level of stress to it. And then I will tell you what happens. Four plus five, so nine. Nine. Uh, you are looking around uh, the hallway. Both of you are. Don't don't see anything. Uh, you know, uh, you look you look down one way. Uh, don't see anything, uh, Captain. You glance back towards the door. You had come through, don't see anything. Then you look down the, the far hallway uh, and bending around the corner, you see that creature uh, kind of appear from around it, uh, almost like it was standing around the side uh, on the far end of the hallway waiting for you. You uh, immediately start to panic, uh, not sure what's going on. Uh, or I mean, you, you not, sorry, uh, you, you absolutely know what's going on. And you, you take a step back, and as you do, you drop the shotgun. Uh, with that, Herb, uh, and, and you're uh, a captain, your stress uh, increases by one more point. Uh, Herb, uh, we're, let's jump over to you really fast. Uh, the data has downloaded. You've heard all of this chatter going on. Yep. What would you like to do? Okay, so uh, the one other main thing I, I just want to make sure I got was um, when they ejected the uh, science module. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of want to know where, like, where that is heading out towards. Like, like they just ejected it right, or did they blow it up? They you know, they did not blow it up. They ejected it near the twenty six Draconis system that they had landed on. Okay, I just wanted... the, the system in the twenty six Draconis uh, yeah. system. I don't know yeah. the name I just want to make sure it's noted where that should be about mm-hmm. uh, in my all my data. Okay. Um, 
so I've heard all this chatter. I have heard all their plans about what they want to do uh, with, you know, repairing calm arrays and stuff. I think that I'm going to be heading up to B because uh, I know that at least the corporate suite has uh, the EEV in it. Okay. Uh, it is going. So in order to do that from, from where you are at, uh, you are going to have to, the, the nearest way would actually be to, um, so there's uh, two ways that you uh, could actually, th- all right, so I'm going to, you, you have a, uh, you know, photographic memory of, uh, mm-hmm. since you're an Android, of the, the ship's layout. So just to let you know, there are three ways that you can do this. You can either go, uh, the closest way would be in a, um, an elevator that's uh, right near the office. However, that's going to put you in the same hallway that you know Joe and the captain and this, this creature are based on, you know, the chatter and, and everything like that, or at least where, where Joe was. I don't think they've said anything about it. You could go to, uh, towards the back of the ship to junk, uh, to the junction there, which you could then go up to uh, junction B, but that would take you at the, uh, towards the, the back of the ship, or you could go all the way to the front of the ship uh, and to the junction up there and then take, uh, take that junction up. That's going to be, that's going to put you at the, the closest, although, well, I mean, it's not going to be the closest. It's going to be the second closest. The closest is uh, by the living, uh, by where the captain and Joe are. Uh, I'm going to go to Junction C1 and go All up right. near the front of the ship. Wouldn't okay, so- he also have the option of going back up the air shaft? That is true. You you are able to go through the air shafts. That, that is correct, if you would prefer to do that. I think... I think just single-mindedly, I'm trying to get there as quickly as possible. Going up the air scrubber shaft would probably take me longer than I want. I want to get there and you know get off of this thing as quickly as possible. So I'm going to make my way up to Junction C1. I definitely don't want to go uh, where I'm going to encounter, I mean, peep the crew of the Montero for sure, but also any the thing that, that, sl- that slashed me either. So Okay. All right. Um Jumping back to uh, jumping back to uh, Captain and Joe, uh, th- this uh, creature is in front of you. Uh, both of you, please give me initiative rolls. Seven. As this is a seven, right? Mm-hmm. Twelve. Okay. Seven, twelve. All right. Um, so uh, the it gets to go first. Um, it is. Uh, pretty far down the, the hall from you. So it's going to need to move. Uh, it, basically in its turn, it is leaping and bounding down the hallway, gets right up to you. Uh, but that is all it can do. Uh, so Captain Paul, it is now your turn. Is it's is it hissing? Is its mouth open? Oh yeah, it, its mouth has de- is definitely open. It is uh, coming you know towards both of you okay. uh, very, very aggressively. I, I yell, uh, Joe, run, and I'm gonna lift the. I oh, you, lost you, my fucking you drop shotgun. The shotgun. You, it, it, you, um, you can go and. Can and my try fast to thing be grab the shotgun? Yeah. Uh, that that is a fast action. All right, my fast action will be grab the shotgun and bring it up. Hopefully, the shaft of the gun will go into the mouth of the creature as he gets up to. It. And I'm going to yell, Joe, run and pull the pull the trigger. Go ahead, uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, this will be ranged combat. Oh, um, terrible! I, I so normally I think you would get a plus three at this. I'm only going to give you a plus one uh, due to the distance, just because you had just panicked and this thing is bounding down the hallway. And I probably have another stress dice. Not yet. Okay. Nope. Not yet. Evenly matched. Five and five. I got, uh, I got two sixes, and I got one little face hugger panic. All right, so go ahead and roll panic, or yeah, uh, so roll a d six, add your current panic to it. D six, add my panic. Uh, seven. All right, um, you. You pull the trigger uh, as it, it's coming down. Um, 
it started to leap towards you as you do it and you hit it right in the shoulder and it goes skittering down uh, uh, down the hallway away from you. Uh, but as it does, uh, it is still um, moving. Uh, it is still, uh, it starts to pick itself up and you just start to, uh, your hand just starts to twitch uh, you know, you can't believe that you, you haven't, you know, uh, taken this thing down, um, your stress level and Joe, your stress level as well. all go up by one. Okay. okay. Just out of curiosity, Captain Paul, what is your stress level at? Oh my God. Six, six. All right. Um, Joe, it is your turn. Can I get a parting shot at it or is it like gone? You don't have a, I know it's still there, but you don't have, I have a gun. I have a, I have a you gave your pistol to Captain Paul, didn't you? He, he, he gave it back. Oh, okay. like I, right. I'm not trying to cheat the system. I swear he gave it back to me after. The yeah, that was a long there. time ago. I gave it back. Coleman or not Clayton. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. All right. So it is only a fast action to move. Um, right. So you you can uh, definitely. All right. Yeah. And I'm calling back at you. Fuck you, Paul. You're the only person left on this boat that I like. <laughs> trying to take a shot at it. All right. Two successes. I have a question. Um, can we apply our freebie success to add like another success to yes, this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to apply my freebie success to make it three successes, but I did have one on the panic. Okay. So um, the, the pistol, I think, only does uh, one damage, uh, mm -hmm. is what we said. Um, yeah, yeah. So with the extra, so you have two extra successes, you can either do two more damage or you can, uh, you can actually swap initiative with the opponent if you wanted to, um, or you can push it back farther. Uh, you get to do uh, two of those really. Um, and you can um, stack them up. So if you just want to do like three damage total. Yeah, I actually... want to do three damage to it. I'm just trying okay. to unload it. You, uh, you absolutely do that. Um, it, it, uh, it picks itself back up uh, and you raise up your pistol pull the trigger and hit it uh, as it opens its mouth. It, you hit it right in, in the head, right into its mouth. And the back of his head just splatters across the hallway. It takes a step forward, uh, kind of reaches out uh, to you, Captain Paul, and then falls down. Um, Ernest uh, and Flynn, uh, you are up. You've gotten your new suit on, Ernest. Uh, you are good to go. Uh, as uh, as you're getting these, um, as you're getting your suit on, uh, Johns and Flynn are kind of standing at the door. Uh, you know, Johns doesn't really have. He he found a uh, like a metal pole somewhere, so he's kind of wielding that. Uh, Flynn has got his axe. Um, uh, Car or Clayton is helping you get your suit on, um, and they should be able to hear all of our gunfire going <laughs> off. Um. Yeah, you definitely hear this. Uh, sorry, just to jump back to Joe, you. I'm sorry, you said you rolled a one on your panic. How, how much stress do you have? Uh, three. Go ahead and roll. Um, you're you're not gonna. It's I'm I'm sorry. It's roll the three stress dice. No, no, no. Just just so roll, roll a six. Uh, roll a d six and okay. then add your stress. Uh, eight. Sorry, I apologize. I, I missed that. Uh, you and so after you took your shot and kind of you know killed uh, this thing, your hands start to tremble as well. Um, you know, just the the adrenaline in your body is, is starting to leave, and because of that, you know, your entire body is is, is starting to shake. Um, Ernest, uh, sorry uh, to jump back to to all of you. Uh, Clayton is helping you get on your suit as she's kind of pulling it up. She kind of pulls you in close uh, so the others can't hear and says. What uh, what's your decision? We need to we need to start doing this now if we're going to do it or soon. Uh, right. So we're set, sort of Oche up next to each other. Yeah. I mean, uh, the there's gunfire. This place is falling apart. Um, do you already have the substance on your EEV? No, we need to we need to go to I don't I don't know to the the science lab I guess and get it, or we need to get the rest of the vaccine uh, and uh, get that and uh, ideally both and put it into the uh, the EEV. Well, maybe and, we should. And with that, we can go. Maybe we should just grab Flynn and go. I want to send Johns on a journey. I mean, I want to give him a task so that he's out of the way. I, I mean, do you think that he'll he'll do it? I mean, it, he, she kind of glances back over. She's the both of them there. Like, I, um, you know, we can we can try. 
Uh, okay, I'm glad to be suited up. Uh, let's go see that once the gunfire shuts down. Yeah, at, at that point, that's when you hear the gunfire uh, oh. going off from, from down the hall. All right, yeah, so we need to wait out whatever is happening here, and we should see to Ava. She can help us with the repairs, is what are I'm you, Are tell. you just saying this to Clayton, or are you saying this to... to no, uh, this is what I'm telling to, to, to Johns and Flynn. Okay. All right. Uh, we should find Herb. I mean, I don't understand. Maybe he's maybe he was too damaged by the thing, but if you know, if we've got a renegade synth, then we've got an issue. So, yeah. But well, first of all, we've got a. I mean, none of us are armed, and there's gunfire. So, oh yeah, that's right. We've got yeah. open comms. D- John- Captain Joe, do you guys have eyes on that action? It's dead. That's it's dead. Yes, it's dead. dead. We killed the the black thing with the double mouth but there might be more we need to get out of here. we need to get the fuck out of here where are you we uh 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 near the bridge there's a uh suite that had eva suits i want to get suited up all right we'll so meet we're, you there we're four Wait, okay uh, this is global channel yes yes yep. yeah c- c- captain uh 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 joe Check its back left shoulder blade. I I hit it squarely. If you're right next to its body, I, I hit it squarely with my axe. If you see an axe wound, that's the one. If not, there's more than one. Oh, look. You look yeah, and you, look. you do see an axe wound. Oh, thank God. Okay. It's, it's yes, the one you killed, pal. We, uh, Joe blew its head off. Oh, Our good, body. good, good, good. So, so that... It, that might be the only one. I hopefully. If you if you can get a shot in, if you shoot it right in the mouth, it it obviously can penetrate all the way into its skull. It seems to be pretty armored. Um, as uh, Joe and, and Captain Paul, as, as you're kind of looking down, you 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 both realize that during this whole firefight, you had both kind of emptied your the the chambers of both respective guns uh i believe you both had at least the uh, one reload so that will uh bring you down to uh zero last of it okay um her yeah go on i'm sorry i'm just gonna have a moment with like i'm gonna grab paul for a second you look like shit captain here and i'm gonna i'm gonna give him an injection of that, uh, mm-hmm. whatever that stuff is. Right. Are, you, are you just like grabbing him and injecting him? Uh, yeah, you look like shit, Paul, and I'm going to just jab him with the... Uh, okay. Um, she, she does this. Uh, I mean, unless you're going to, you know, you want to try to stop her. No, I think I trust her. So okay. I'm, I'm a little dazed. Uh, so what you, does it do? It, uh, it actually starts to, to numb where, where she uh, injects you. And you, you feel this calm, calm come over you, and all of your stress goes down to zero. Oh, oh. Listen to me. Listen to me. And I'm like, I've cut all comms. Listen to me, Paul. We need to get the fuck out of here. You and me and I, Harker, maybe. I don't, I don't give a shit. We need to get out of here. Yeah, baby. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it a minute. You'll calm down. It'll be fine. This is, it, I've done this before. It's, all, it's fine. Well, listen to the. Uh... It isn't the corporate suite just right around the yeah. corner? Fuck the it, it people. <laughs> Fuck Coleman. We need to get out of here. All right. All right. Let's go there. But, you know, it really looks bad if the captain's the survivor and everybody else. So, oh, uh, nice. Herb, uh, as this goes on, you have made your way to uh, Junction C1. You start to go up junction uh, into junction B once you're on deck B. Step out into the hallway and start heading down towards the uh, uh, the corporate suite. Uh, Flynn and Ernest and Johns and Clayton, uh, you know, you had just talked to uh, the captain and Joe. Uh, where did you say that you were going to meet them? Uh, I said the I mess. Them over quite the... At the mess. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ernest and, and Dr. Flynn, what, what are you doing? Uh, are you just going to head over to the, the mess hall? I thought they were actually joining us where I donned the EVA suit. Uh, that's I am what I said. Possible. Yeah, yeah. Encouraging okay. people to go and look in on Ava. So, Ava's in. Yeah. 
Well, we can, we'll, we'll see each other in the hallway. But of course, first thing we're going to do is go through the door towards the corporate suite. Which we should be able to see Herb coming down the hall. <laughs> yeah, and on the... We could take the short trip to the mess hall, or we could take the long trip past the armory toward the corporate suite. I remember because. the armory was destroyed in the uh, the blast. Right. Yeah. So the door is sealed. You can open it, but you're going to be opening it into outer space. Oh, we're not going into. The, we're not opening the armory. Okay. We're we're going past the armory because we're all running for the life jackets because we're all a right. bunch of cowards. So, as uh, so, Herb, you step out uh, into the hallway, start heading towards the corporate suite. Uh, Ernest and Dr. Flynn and uh, the other two, uh, you uh, step out into the hallway uh, going, you said you're going to go the long way around past the armory, uh, start heading towards that way. Uh, And uh, Joe and Captain Paul, you step through the doorway into that hallway just as Herb uh, steps uh, on the other side of the hallway. Uh, You all just kind of lock eyes. Uh, You can see even from this distance with the lights that are on, um, that Herb has this gash across his chest. He has taken off his suit, uh, and there is uh, white, dried white milky liquid all over his chest. As this happens, uh, all of you uh, kind of hear Mother come over the speakers uh, and say, warning, cryo chambers one and three are damaged. Cryo chamber two is uh, uh, in in process of malfunctioning, uh, and these kind of red lights start coming on, uh, and that is where we're going to call it for the night. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> oh no! No, who the fuck is taking this? So before before we, we wrap it up, we are absolutely in Act Three. All of you get one more story point, so please remember that for the next time. All right. So I've got two story points. Which me makes... too. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, I blame our players you, included. Our players included David Gasway, Holly Puto, Kent Flu, Stuart Lively, and myself, with Tyler Hudak as uh, the game mother. Uh, we have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games, and you can learn the fine arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H. Um, For another adventure into the dark future and the alien role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.